Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we are going to cover Next.js 10's new feature, Internationalized Routing. So we can have websites that work in multiple different languages and an easy way to sort of manage the routing between the different, um, the different languages. This is something I did a couple years ago before this feature existed, obviously, and I had to do it with a with a custom express server running within Next.js and it was a nightmare. This is so much easier. I wish this existed a couple years ago. So the first thing we're going to do to get this up and running is to go to this uh, very bare bones Next.js app I have and go into the next.config.js file. So in here we need to set up some configuration to tell Next.js what languages we want to support. And you do that by adding in an IETN, which stands for short form for internationalization. And we tell it what locales we want. So in this one, we're going to have English, Espanol, and Francais. And the default locale is going to be English. Now, Next.js supports two different ways to handle sort of which locale it's going to use. It supports path-based routing, which is what we're going to do today. And you can also set up different domains. So when it sees that domain, it will do, say, French. A different domain will be English and Spanish, etc. But we're doing path-based routing. So I'm going to start up this app. I've done a commit prior to starting the code. So if you want to follow along, I'll link to that in the description below. So now that it's up and running, we can just go to this home page and start to add the functionality. So the first cool thing to point out and something you don't have to do at all is that Next.js will automatically add the lang and then en or es or whatever to your HTML tag for you. So you don't have to do anything, um, anything about that. And right out of the gate, we can go to any of the locales we set up. So we can go to slash es. And so what this is doing is it's serving up our homepage still, but it's serving up the Spanish version. So obviously it still says home. So we have a little bit of work to show different text based on um, what language the user is viewing it in. But you can see down here, lang, lang is ES now. So we could, we could go to French if we wanted, but let's go to, I don't know what GB is, but it's not a language we support, so it gives the 404 page, which is what you'd expect. So let's try to figure out how to get access to what locale the user's browsing the site in, in our code. And we're going to do that by popping over to the index, which is the home page. And the way you get the locale is actually through the router. So what we can do is we can say const locale, and that is equal to use router, the hook that comes with uh, Next.js. And if we were to just pop out home with the locale, that is what would show up on the page. So we have ES here. Now they have, um, so we could, why don't we just say uh, current locale is that. They have another thing you can grab, which is what are all of the available locales? So we can just ask for the locales here. And why don't we um, display them and iterate through them so we can show how to link to different to the same page but in different locales so maybe above the h1 we'll have a nav and in the nav we'll have a ul and we're going to iterate over the locales so we're going to map them i'm just going to call them loc so i don't have a same variable as this one up here and in here we will show an li with the loc and because we're mapping we need this key set up so with that in place, we now see the different locales we have available for the user. And we can link to different ones by using link. So this is the built-in link component that comes with Next.js. And the way link works is you need to tell it an href. So we're going to go to the home page. So we'll set up the a tags around loc. But right now, it would basically just they all link to the same place. So if you don't pass anything, it links to that page, but in the current locale that you're viewing it in. So how do you switch to a different locale? You can tell the link, hey, go to this locale uh, when the user clicks in. So now, en goes to 
the home page without a locale, and that's because it's the default one. ES takes you to ES, French takes you to French. So that's how you can basically um, handle routing and, and accessing the locale within Next.js. The next thing I wanted to do is sort of when you're, you've got a website that's available in multiple languages, we have to do this a lot in Canada because we have English and French as official languages. So we often have to build websites in English and French. And there's a couple different types of content that you have to have available. Um, some is like hard coded text that you'd have in your code, like this word current locale or something like that. Um, other is data that comes from your backend, which maybe comes from the database or whatnot. We don't have a database, but I'm going to sort of create a backend endpoint where I'm going to load some content that changes a little bit depending what language we're in. So we're going to use use SWR for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask for some data and that is going to come from use SWR and use SWR. Uh, you can pass in keys. So I'm actually going to pass in a key that is the locale and then just the word hello. And um, that way, whenever the locale changes, it will tell SWR to, to go refresh with, with the new locale. And we need to create a, a loader function. So we're just going to call it load data and we will implement that here above. So const load data is an async arrow function that's going to receive the locale because that's the first of this key that we're passing in. And then what we can use it is fetch to get a response. So let's await fetch to fetch from API hello, which is a, a page I have set up. And we're going to pass some headers and we are going to pass the accept dash language header with the value of the locale. So that will send up the request. We're going to pass in the language that the user wants the content in, and then we'll get the data from the response converted to JSON, and then we'll return that. So, oh, sorry, we'll return the data. I'm not going to get into displaying it in any sort of fancy way. I'm just going to put in a pre-tag, I'm going to json.stringify the response. So data, uh, null, spacing of two, close that off. So it already works because that endpoint uh, exists, but it just always returns this name John Doe. So if we go and look at hello, you can see it's a very simple, it's just returning name John Doe. So what I can do is I can get the locale from the request dot headers and accept language. And if it's not there, we'll just fall back to English. And because this is just a demo, normally maybe you'd pull from the database in a different way, depending on the locale that the user sent in. I am just going to embed the locale within the response so that we can see that it's coming back in different languages. So John Doe, EN, John Doe, ES, etc. So I'm on French, so I'm seeing John Doe French. Switch to Spanish, it makes another request to the back end to get the new content in that language, English, etc. So that's the first type of data, basically external data that's coming from a, an API, a REST or GraphQL. You're loading it from your database and you're having to load it in the language that the user wants it in. The next form that we're going to cover is that hard-coded content that lives sort of in the template. So we will maybe switch this current locale text and we'll just put the word name. So maybe what we want to do is instead of always saying name, we're in French now, so it'd be nom. If we're in Spanish, it'd be nombre. So we want to load the correct name in whatever language the user's in. So Next.js doesn't do this out of the box. You'll need to use another tool to sort of um, accomplish this, but it works really well together with the tools that you can do this. So we're going to use one called React Intel, internationalization. And the first thing to do for this to work correctly is we need to create a provider for it. So I am going to go into 
um, the app that wraps itself around every single page level component. And I'm going to use the international provider that comes from this package. So we'll just paste that in there. And we need to pass a couple things to this. We need to first pass what locale do we want um, our content available in. So remember that comes from the router. So now we have that. And this also wants the messages. So I'm just gonna create a very simple like translation messages. Um, maybe you would be loading this from an external um, API or maybe you'd have them in separate files somewhere, but I am just going to create messages where we have English for name is name, French for name is nom, and um, Spanish for name is uh, nombre. So with the messages in place, we'll grab the correct translations for the locale that we're in. And now our provider has, is providing these translations to the rest of our app. So nothing should have changed yet. But if we go back into our home page, we can use this use Intel um, hook to load the translations. So we're going to say const is equal to use Intel. And this gives us a function called format message. They have other helpers for formatting dates and numbers in different locales. We're going to use this one format message and we're going to short form it to F so that it's a little bit easier to call. So now what you would do, instead of just saying the, the text name, you would have to call the F function. And the way that this one works is you pass an object with the ID of your translation. So we want it to translate the key of name and that will return the, the correct one in the language you're in. So you can see here I'm in Spanish, it's nombre. French is nom, now over to English and it's name. So what we've done here is we've, um, thanks to this new internationalization support, we can now support different languages very easily in the URL. It automatically uh, um, allows you to add sort of the, the locale and then the page to your path. So imagine you had a page called about.js and it was a export default function about which returns a div that says about. Cool, let's imagine we had this page. So we could go to slash es slash about or you could go to English or it also works without a locale in here, in which case it will just show whatever the default, um, the default locale is set up. So that's how the route-based um, uh, interna inter internationalization or IETN works out. Uh, we also saw how you might load data by passing the locale to the backend so that it can load it from the database in the correct language. And we saw how to use the package React Intel to load translations within our app where we have sort of all of the translations set up somewhere. Now this is a real pain to maintain. Lo localized websites are really hard to create and maintain because you might not know the languages, so you have to work with a translation team, pass them all over to them in some format, they fill it out, you have to get them back into this system. So it can be a real pain, but it's sort of the only way to manage this sort of application that's available in multiple languages. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, bye.